He's alive, he's alive. And we are victorious through him because he's alive. Oh, if he ever never did anything else, that would be enough to praise him because he is alive. He's not dead like Muhammad. He's not in a grave like Buddha. He is risen up and he is seated at the right hand of an almighty God. This weekend, Jesus, we declare, here I am to worship, here I am, here I am to sing. Come on, say it. Say that again. Say, here I am. Here I am to bow down. Here I am to bow down. Here I am to say that you're right. You're all together. All together.
what it cost to see myself. Woo! Woo! Ha <laughs> ha! Listen, I want you to understand something. We're about to see some freedom in this place this morning. And here's how we're going to start it out. Because we didn't come here for spectacle or show. We came that he may run through this place like a mighty rushing wind. Woo! So here's what we're going to do. Every time in the Bible where freedom and breakthrough come, is always preceded by a sound. When God created the earth, what did he do? It said that he spoke. Every time something happens, there's a sound that has to precede it. And so it's all cute and cool and nice to sing about freedom, but I think we're going to step into freedom this morning. Oh, uh, well, Pastor Brandon, I don't, I don't know if it takes all that. Well, let me prove it to you. In the Old Testament, the children of Israel were commanded to march around the wall seven times for seven days. And on the seventh day, he said, I want you to be quiet for six times. But on the seventh time, I want you to what? Release a shout. Because of their obedience, the walls came down. Now I want you to look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, I don't know if you came to look pretty today, but I've got some walls that need to come down. Now, up, 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 up. All right, hey, I got you. Here's the thing. You might not be near a neighbor right now who's, who's got it going on. You know, they might be tired. They might have had to fight that crazy traffic on, on uh, the streets coming to the church today. They late. The baby's been acting crazy, but let me help you. You ready? New Testament says this, that in the midnight hour, Paul and Silas were shackled. They were in chains, but they begin to lift up a praise unto God. And it says that when they lifted up a shout, the walls begin to shake, the foundation of the prison begin to shake. And get this, not only did their chains loose, but because of their praise, everybody around them became free. So I don't know about you this morning, but I want to see if there's any lady in here that's willing to get a little crazy this morning, that's willing to get a little ugly this morning, to praise God, not only for themselves, but for somebody that's around them. If that's you, I want to hear you lift up a shout. One, two, three. Come on, lift it up. Lift it up right now. There's freedom. There's liberty in the name of Jesus. He's given us the victory. Come on. Somebody scream. Woo. Hallelujah. My God. Come on, praise him like he's already done it. See, if you're from the well, you know that I've taught you guys that there's power in declaring. In the book of Revelation, an angel tells John that the essence of prophecy is declaring who Jesus is. Some of you came in this morning, and you've got some big issues facing you. But let me tell you something, you serve an even bigger God, amen? And so in worship, we're going to respond, and we're going to prophesy into the atmosphere. And it's going to be declaring who Jesus is to our situation, to our circumstance, to our life. Amen? So that's why I like to say things like, I heard a thousand stories of what this world says you like. But I heard the tender whisper of love in my darkest night and you tell. That you're pleased and 
to us. You're a good, good dad. It's who you are. <laughs> Even if you don't know what a good daddy looks like, he said he'll be that for you today. Won't you just lift your hands and tell him, you're a good, good dad. It's who you are. It's who you are. It's who you are. Say it again. You're a good, good dad. Ladies, let me hear you. Tell them you're a good, good man. you You're a good, good man. And I'm loved by It's who I am. Speak that over your life. It's who I am. I'll say it again. And I'm loved by you. It's who I am. It's who I am. It's who I am. Cause I call your name. Lord, you reply. You bring your kingdom. Stand by my side. The giver of life, you're more than I need. Father, you're everything that's precious to me. I call your name, Lord, you reply. You bring your By my side, you're the giver. You're more than I'll ever need, Jesus. Because, Father, you're everything that's precious to me.
and see. I don't know about you, but I'm tasting some good things about my father right now. I have a good appetite right now. Somebody need to give him praise. Somebody need to give him honor. Oh, he deserves it. He deserves all the glory. He deserves all the honor. Woo! Oh God, I know you're here. I know you're here. I know you're here. Woo. Why don't you hug two or three people and tell them you love them? Come on, tell them the healer is here. The healer is here. Come on, give them a big, give them a, a good hug. A good, somebody need a hug today. Somebody need a hug today. Oh, you deserve all the glory. You deserve. future. know you in real worship when you start tearing up and breaking your necklaces and stuff. But he deserves all the glory. Oh, he deserves it. I can care less about the necklace, but I love my God. Hey, God. Woo! Hallelujah. You may be seated if you can. Ah, I love him that much. How many of you love the Lord? Amen. We're so honored. You can bring up the lights. I'm telling you, I'm full. I don't know about you all. I felt like I just ate a big steak early this morning because that's just how good our God is. Amen. Well, we're going to definitely do kingdom investment right now. We're going to let you sow into this conference. And if this conference has been a blessing to you, the Bible says give and it shall be given to you. What did he say? Shaking together and running over shall men give into our bosom. But you know when you lick, I told you when it, it's in your hand, but it doesn't leave your life. Sowing, that's what I'm telling you. Sow into the kingdom of God. God wants you to. Blessed is a cheerful giver. So I want to see smiles on your face. 
smiles on your face. I'm telling you, somebody say, I don't look like what I've been through. Some of y'all have been through some stuff, some mess. Some of y'all have really been through some mess. Say, look at me now. Somebody said, just look again, just look again, just look again, just look again. Hey, Amen. So we're going to take this offering, and we're going to definitely, so we can hear this powerhouse. We have Pastor Joanne Rosario in country in the house. Come on, give it up, give it up, give it up. Woo! And when I tell you she's a sweetie pie, I mean, she is an awesome, awesome woman of God. Amen. And I would like to give a shout out to Pastor Kim. Come on, Pastor Kim. Stand up, Pastor Kim Lyons. She flew in all the way from Lima, Ohio, just to be with you. Come on now, my dear sister in the Lord, which is a preacher of powerhouse as well. So if you all would just stand to your feet, ushers, if you all would take your places, and we're going to give. Come on, come up here giving with a cheerful giver. Hold up your offerings. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you for this time of giving, Father God. Everything that they've sown, Father, sown, Father God, give it back to them 100-fold, Father God. Bless their houses, bless their, bless their jobs, Father God. Even bless their minds. Somebody have been praying for their mind, God. I thank you, Father God. Things are changing right now in the name of Jesus. Come up here sowing, sowing. Come up here cheering. I want you to come up here dancing, dancing. Hallelujah. Oh, God. Come on, put those hands together if you're sitting down. Come on, come on. That's it. That's it. Come on, act like the devil's head is between your hands. Come on. Come on. That's it. Woo! I'm excited. Tell your neighbor, say, wake up. We're getting, be, re, getting ready to be sh shaking up. Come on. That's it. Woo! Carrie in the house. I love it. I love it. Oh, I love all the smiles. Boy, I honor you, my Jesus. You're doing a great job. Amen, amen. Thank you for your giving. We love you. We honor you right now in the name of Jesus. Bless your houses. Well, right now we have a powerful dance. And then the next voice you will hear is my dear sister, Pastor Joanne Rosario Condry. And let me tell you something. I told you all earlier that even when we have connections, we like to connect with women all over the world. But when I was praying, the Holy Ghost said, Pastor Joanne Rosario, country. So I know that there's a word in her belly. I know it is. So ladies, I'm telling you, you're in the birthing room. So it's going to get messy in here. Because when she starts, she's going to be the preacher on the runway. She's going to be walking it, and whatever God tells her, we're going to receive it. Amen, ladies? It's already done. It's already done. Dancers, come forth.
Amazing. Come on, let's give our dancers another hand. Superb. How many know that Jesus is our healer? Amen. Hallelujah. I'm feeling refreshed right about now. But right now, if you will stand to your feet, 
don't matter if you have a size five on or a size 11 like I have. The woman of God is in this house. Come on, let's show some love to Pastor Joanne Rosario Cordre. Woo! Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Jesus, we worship you. 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 We worship you. We worship you. We worship you, Almighty God. We worship you. We worship you. We worship you. begin to worship him. Not because you have to, but because you want to.
presence, oh God. hear the spirit of the Lord saying this morning that he is removing the sting of rape and abuse. He is removing the sting of rape and abuse. He is removing the pain. He is removing the memory. He is removing the sting. When you think about it, no longer is it going to affect you the way it used to affect you. If you believe that for yourself, I'm going to ask you to lift your hands. Don't be ashamed. Don't care about what anybody else has to say about you. When you get in the presence of God, you got to get what God has for you. And you can't worry about what anybody else's opinion is about you. You have to say, God, I need you. I need you now. Right now, Father, according to your word, in the name of Jesus, 
words, remove the sting of abuse, remove the sting of molestation, remove the sting of death. Now, remove the sting, Father God, in the name of Jesus, the pain, the pain. Holy Spirit, right now in the name of Jesus, we thank you for your presence. We thank you that you are here to heal. You are here to deliver. We thank you right now, Father God, for a lasting transformation. I ask for a destruction and a breaking of everything that is not like you in the lives of your people. I declare right now by the power of the Holy Spirit a deliverance and a breaking. Father God, addiction, Father God, pornography, Father God, fornication, Father God, anything that is not like you, Father God, fear, fear, the fear that's just as bad as the sexual addiction, fear that stops you from doing what God called you to do, I curse it and I bind it now in the name of Jesus. I thank you, Lord, Father, because you are doing a new work in the heart of your people, oh God, that it is no longer, Father, just an external expression of religion, but it is an internal expression of relationship, and we thank you. We thank you now for your presence. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. I'm going to ask you to take your seats in the presence of the Lord. Our God is an awesome God. He reigns from heaven above with wind. Forgive me, I'm just in love with him. Wisdom, power, and love, our God is an awesome God. Our God is an awesome God. He reigns from heaven above with wisdom, power, and love, our God is an awesome God. Oh, He reigns. Oh, he reigns. Our God is an awesome 
We thank you, we thank you. We magnify you, we magnify you. Come on, lift up a prayer in this place. Come on and lift a prayer in this place. Come on and lift a prayer in this place. your hands in his presence. Have your way. Have your way. Have your way. Have your way. Have your way, Holy Spirit. Have your way, Holy Spirit. Have your way, Holy Spirit. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Whew. Healing that you can't put into words in the name of Jesus. Healing that is so deep that you can't even explain in the name of Jesus. Deliverance that is so instant you can't even understand it in the name of Jesus. Breakthrough that comes now in the name of Jesus. No more hindrance in the name of Jesus. No more fear in the name of Jesus. do it. Let's open our word. Let's open our Bible. You may say, Joanne, why do you sing so much? I sing because I can't preach without him. So I've come to find out that if I worship him and his Holy Spirit comes, then he'll help me. And he can do a much better job than I can. 
because he digs down deep. And I believe, I believe with all my heart that I'm talking to a group of women in here that have made up their mind to follow Jesus. I believe that I'm talking to a group of women that have decided to turn away from sin with the help of the Holy Ghost. Let me say that again, with the help of the Holy Ghost. I just loved Dr. Jewel last night when she talked about having to go to. Give, give, give God thanks for her. Such a blessing. I loved when she was talking last night and she began to say how when she was single, she'd call up the church mother and say, can I stay over at your house? That's, that's the truth. We need help being kept sometimes. See, if we would stop pretending we got it all together, then we might be able to be holy for real. You got to know who you can call on when you're struggling. And say, girl, I need some help. I need some accountability. Open your Bible to 1 Corinthians. I hope you came to hear a word from God today. Because I believe that he has given me a word. I don't consider myself to be a preacher in the traditional sense of the word. But if I do get excited and holler a little bit, please forgive me. Because it happens sometimes. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 7 and 8 says this. But we impart a secret and hidden wisdom of God which God decreed before the angels for our glory, for our glory. Verse 8, none of the rulers of this age understood this, for if they had, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. Help me, Holy Ghost. But as it is written, what no eye has seen, nor ear heard, nor the heart of man imagined, what God has prepared for those who love him. These things God has revealed to us through the Spirit, for the Spirit searches everything, even the deep things of God. Even the deep things of God. I want you to look at your sister and say, girl, give up the ghost. As I was reading this scripture, it's going to make sense in a minute. As I was reading this scripture, the Holy Spirit brought to my attention in the word where it says, none of the rulers of this age understood this. For if they had, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. So I need you to understand this. I need you to understand that since the beginning of time, there's been a fight between, well, not really a fight, but Lucifer wanted to pick a fight with God, with the almighty God. And he felt like he was just as good. He felt like he was better than God. He felt that he deserved the worship. So he has had this fight against an almighty God that he cannot beat. <laughs> Can I get an amen? And when he saw and understood that the Son of God had come, he said, this is my perfect opportunity to gain revenge or to gain an edge on one that is sitting in that high place that I desire. So he took it upon himself to say, you know what? He thought it was his bright idea. He thought it was his idea to crucify the Lord of glory. He didn't understand that being crucified was the way that Jesus was going to be able to fulfill the promise and fulfill what it was that we needed in order so that we can be restored unto God. So I need you to understand this morning one thing about our enemy. He doesn't know as much as you think he knows. In the same way that Jesus came with a purpose, God sent you here with a purpose. He sent you here with a divine assignment that you have got to fulfill before you leave this earth. You don't need to be wasting time worrying about who likes you and who doesn't like you and who accepts you, who doesn't accept you, who approves you and who doesn't approve you. You got to get about your business. Stop apologizing for your ambition. Stop apologizing for your drive. Stop apologizing because you want more of God and stop apologizing because you more, want more out of this abundant life that Jesus promised you. So sometimes we want to act like the devil knows everything. He is not God. He is not omniscient. He is not omnipresent. He is not everywhere at the same time. He has little demons and little minions that have a very, very sophisticated communication system among themselves. And they talk about what it is that's going on. But he doesn't know it all. He doesn't see it all. 
and he's not everywhere because if he had, he would not have crucified Jesus. He didn't even know that he was signing his own failure certificate. He didn't know he was signing his own situation that was going to lock him up at the end of days. He didn't know that the very, very ones, the children and the sons and daughters of God that he was trying to destroy because he started with Adam and Eve. He didn't understand. He thought that his death was going to be more powerful than the Holy Ghost and with the, or the, more powerful than the wisdom of God that was the mystery of God that was being revealed through Jesus Christ dying on that cross. He thought the power of death was greater than, uh, than the mind of God, than the plan of God, than the wisdom of God, than the mysteries of God. And guess what? He was sadly mistaken. So he doesn't know it all. Stop being afraid of him. Stop dealing with him like he is omniscient. He is not God. He is a fallen angel. And you have to get in position and you have to take authority over him. That's a side note. Let's go to Matthew 16. I hope you brought your Bible with you. I hope you believe in taking notes. Matthew 16. So first, the enemy doesn't know it all. Matthew 16, verse 21 to 23. For that time, Jesus began to show his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and suffer many things from the elders and chief priests and scribes and be killed. And on the third day be raised. And Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him, saying, far be it from you, Lord. This shall never happen to you. But he turned and he said to Peter, get behind me, Satan. You are a hindrance to me, for you are not setting your mind on the things of God, but on the things of man. Why was he calling him Satan? Because Peter at this time was allowing himself to be influenced by Satan. He was allowing himself to try to pull Jesus away from the plan of God. See, not everybody that comes to tell you you don't need to go through is talking the words of God to you. Oh, you, we don't want to hear that. Everybody that comes to you and says, well, you ain't got to deal with all that. You need to just leave him. That, that may not be what God is saying. The way of God is not always the easy road. I hope y'all still like me after this. It's not always the easy road. I'm a pastor's daughter. Been a pastor's daughter my whole life. I started singing at the age of two. My only dream and my only ambition and desire was to be a, a professional singer. And right around my early 20s, God gave me the opportunity to uh, travel with Fred Hammond and Donnie McClurkin and this artist and that person and record with some of the, the, the top gospel artists in the nation. And I felt like I've made it. This is my dream. This is what I did as a child singing, you know, in the bathroom with the, with the comb and I'm in the mirror. And I just felt like this is it. This is it. I'm in my purpose. This is it. Halfway through my record deal, I lose my voice for a year and a half. And couldn't sing. Had to come off the road. I was barely able to finish three albums for the record company. And by the time I got to the end of the third, six months before I married my husband, on the day I was ordained an evangelist, I got a call. I got a call from the record company that says, you know what, we appreciate you, but we don't want to work with you anymore. And I got dropped. So I'm confused. I'm saying, God, I went through this losing of my voice. My voice is being restored. I thought this was your plan for me. I thought this is what you had for me. I don't know what's going on. What am I? See, because the problem was is I was defining myself as a singer. I'm going to help somebody this morning. I was defining myself by the gift that God had given me, not by the definition that God had placed on my life since the beginning of time. So what God did was he gave it to me for a season and for a time because of his wisdom to allow me to meet my husband, to align me with his will, and then he snatched it all away. And I found myself at home with no income, with no more record deal, trying to figure out what am I supposed to be doing. My husband's on the radio. He's on television. I feel like I ain't doing nothing. I had a miscarriage, lost a baby. I'm pregnant again. I'm sitting up. It's like, what am I doing? Are all those prophecies that were spoken over me true? Are all those things that God said I was going to do for him, is that true? Is that not, is that not what you're going to do with me anymore? I, why am I sitting here? I feel like I'm not doing anything. I feel like I have no worth. I feel like, what am God? 
See, some of you are in that place right now. You feel like you're in the middle of the desert. You feel like every door has closed. You feel like you don't even know what is going on. You feel like, God, are all the things that you spoke and you told me about going to come to pass? And you are going through your own death experience. I am here to tell you that not every death experience is the devil. Not every, and you know what? Even if the devil tried to cause it, God orchestrated it because there are some things that he needs to process in you. There are some things that he needs to do in you. In that season and in that time of what I felt like was death for me, because everything that I loved, everything that I didn't know had become an idol to me. Everything that I didn't realize had become an idol to me, God had to remove because there was a processing, there was a breaking, there was a filling, there was an emptying, there was a tearing down, and there was a building up that had to happen in order for me to get to where I am right now. There was a new mentality that had to be placed in my mind. Where I couldn't just define myself as a worshiper or as a singer. I couldn't define myself as the talent or the gift that God had given me. I had to define myself as a daughter of God, willing to obey him in whatever it is that he asked me to do. So I need you to understand this morning that to manifest kingdom greatness and purpose, death is not an option. Oh, it's getting quiet. But I'm okay with that. Death is not an option. It's a mandatory part of God's process. It's a mandatory part of God's process. So there are things that the enemy has been trying to, I'm talking to people that are living holy. I'm talking to people, I'm not talking about you living in sin, and, and he might use that too. When you open, when you sin and you live in sin, you open the door to the enemy. But I'm especially talking to people that you've been given, you've been living holy, you ain't been sleeping around, and you're still, you feel like you're stuck and you don't understand why. And in this process of feeling like you're stuck, you keep fighting God. You keep fighting God because you don't understand why am I in this place. In that season, I kept fighting God. I kept trying to figure out, how am I going to go back to doing what I used to do? How am I going to go back to being who I used to be? How am I going to go back to what I used to, what I used to, what I used to? And God was saying, baby, it's not about what I used to, but it's about what I'm going to. We're so stuck with what we used to be or what we used to do that we can't even see what God is saying you're going to do. So there has to be a dying process. There has to be a dying process. Say with me, there has to be a dying process. When you're in the middle of that process, it's very important that you stop fighting God. Stop fighting God. I finally got to a point where I stopped fighting God. And I began to cooperate with the process. Say with me, cooperate, cooperate. With, the with the process. Do you realize that there are certain foods that if they are not processed, they cannot be consumed? There are certain things that if they're not processed correctly, if somebody ingests it, it's going to be unhealthy for them. Do you realize that if you try to step out to do what God has called you to do and you remain unprocessed, you're going to hurt more people than you help? You have to be processed. You have to be processed. What is it to be processed? It's a natural or involuntary series of changes. It's series of actions or steps taken in order to achieve a particular end. So you think you got it all together, but God is looking at your life and he's saying, I have a particular end in mind for you. And I know what it takes to process you to get you to that point. So he allows you not to get that job. I don't want to hear that. Because I've been told that I'm, I'm highly favored. I've been told that I'm the head and not the tail. I've been told I'm above and not beneath. All of those things are true. But guess what? Sometimes what you think is being above and not beneath is really below what God has for you. Does anybody hear me this morning? Sometimes what you think is the favor is a curse waiting to happen. So we have to renew our mind. 
when you're living holy and when you're loving Jesus and you're serving God and you're going after him, when a door closes, you need to say glory to God. Hallelujah. Do you understand what I'm saying? And you cooperate with the process. You cooperate. Let's think about Jesus. Let's think about Jesus. Oh, my God. So let's go to John. I'm not going to be long. Let's go to John 12, verse 23. And it said, and Jesus answered them, the hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. Truly, truly, I say to you, unless a grain of wheat falls into the earth and dies, it remains alone. But if it dies, it bears much fruit. Whoever loves his life loses it, and whoever hates his life in this world will keep it for eternal life. If anyone serves me, he must follow me, and where I am, there will be my servant also. If anyone serves me, the Father will honor him. So we want to multiply. We want to be great. We want to bear much fruit, but we don't want to die. And we've been sold a gospel that does not require dying. We've been sold a Christianity that does not require change, that does not require repentance, that does not require seeking God, that does not require dying to the flesh. And we're trying to live out this gospel, and we're looking at God and saying, God, why isn't it working? He said, because it's not my word. It's not what I've said. See, man may say one thing, but what does God say? He said, if you want to multiply, if you want to bear fruit, if you want to be great, then you have to die. What does that mean? In the kingdom of God, death will produce multiplication and increase. What kind of death am I talking about? Death to arrogance. Death to fear. Death to laziness. Oh, wow. You know what so blessed me last night about Dr. Jewell's message? is that in the same way that we as ministers teach spiritual responsibility, that you have to be spiritually responsible in your relation. Yes, Jesus died on the cross, but you have to seek him in order to establish a relationship with him so that the Holy Spirit can finish the work in you. It's the same way. We want financial prosperity, but we don't want to do anything to get it. Do you understand what I'm saying? In every area, there is financial, I mean, there's responsibility. So if it's in finances, if it's in your spiritual life, it's in your relationships, whatever it is, it's not going to just drop in your lap. You got to do something to cause the effect that you desire. So he's saying there has to be a death in order for there to be multiplication. There has to be a death. There has to be a death to the way you think about certain things. I had to die to the idea that I was born to be a gospel artist. I had to die to that idea. Does that mean I won't ever record again? No. Does that mean that I won't sing? No. That's not what it means. But it means that I had to get a new mentality for where God was trying to take me. And this is the part that I think is amazing. The enemy is constantly trying to break you. And he's trying to bring you down, and he's trying to destroy you, but he doesn't even understand that by doing what he's doing, he is pushing you into your destiny. But the key of it is that you need to know that's what's happening. See, if you get in the middle of the desert and you just sit and begin to whine and complain like the children of Israel, you're going to keep walking around in circles for 40 years, as opposed to getting in the wilderness and keeping your worship. Getting in the wilderness and continuing to love God. Getting in your wilderness and saying, okay, God, however long I need to be here, go ahead and process me. Do whatever it is that you need to do in my life. I submit my will to your plan. Maybe the plan that I had for me is not the plan that you have for me. So I'm here and I submit and I yield to you. Whatever it is that you want me to do, wherever it is that I want, you want me to go. He may not want you to go nowhere and just get somewhere and sit down with him. And you busy trying to go somewhere. Get somewhere and sit down. Yeah, yeah. Yes, I'm Puerto Rican, but I can do that too. Don't play. You understand? Like, we're trying to do this and we're trying to do that. Get somewhere and listen. Get somewhere and listen. And do what he wants you to do. So it's important for you to stop fighting this process. You're in the middle of this desert. You're in the, you know what started happening to me during that time of process? 
because my husband was on the radio at that time from 7 p.m. to 11. I didn't have a home church. I didn't have any friends. I didn't have anybody's house who I could go to. I couldn't go down the street to my mama's house. I was home alone. And if I had continued to whine and complain, I would have wasted that time. But it's in that time that I started to seek God like I'd never sought him before. In that time, and I, I brought these with me today. This is my 40-day devotional. And I, I, there's, there's, a, there's, a, there's a day in here that is called being alone is not so bad. Because sometimes you got to learn how to be in that place of desert and get by yourself and stop worrying about everybody approving you and just get, go get somewhere and get with God. You understand what I'm saying? And not fight the process. I brought a hundred of these with me. I usually sell them for $10, but I'm not selling them for anything today. So if you want it, you can sow a seed if you desire to. It's completely up to you. I don't care. I just want whoever needs it to take it home with them. Okay? So stop fighting the dying process. Look at this, Matthew 26, 47. God, I thank you for your Holy Spirit. While he was still speaking, this is Jesus, Judas came, one of the 12, and with him a great crowd with swords and clubs from the chief priests and the elders of the people. Now the betrayer had given them a sign saying, the one I will kiss is the man, seize him. And he came up to Jesus at once and said, greetings, rabbi. And he kissed him. And Jesus said to him, friend, do what you came to do. Then they came up and laid hands on Jesus and seized him. And behold, one of those who were with Jesus stretched out his hand and drew his sword and struck the servant of the high priest and cut off his ear. Then Jesus said to him, put your sword back into place. For all who take the sword will perish by the sword. Do you think that I cannot appeal to my father? And he will at once send me more than 12 legions of angels. But how then should the scripture be fulfilled that it must be so? So I need you to put yourself in the place of Jesus right now. In the garden. And all of us have to have this moment where we're in there and we're crying and the tears and we have to come to that place where we say, God, not my will, but your will be done. I understand that it is my season to die to some things. And God, not my will, but your will be done. But you know what some of us are doing? They come in to crucify us and we say, no, man, give me that sword. Because I'm going, uh-uh, no, y'all going to, no, you're not going to take me. I'm not ready to die. I'm not ready for my flesh to die. I'm not ready for my attitude to die. I'm not ready for everything that is about me that makes me me. I'm not ready for that to die. And you're fighting the process, not understanding that it is necessary, not understanding that it's mandatory, not understanding that you want the doorway to greatness. The doorway of greatness comes through your death. See, preaching like this won't make you popular, and I'm okay with that. Because I'm going to tell it like it is. I'm not going to stand before God and have to apologize to him for not telling the truth. It is time to die. Look at your sister say, give up the ghost. Just give it up. Just give it up. Just give it up. See, Jesus was so in tune with the Holy Spirit. He was so in tune with the plan of God that he understood. And yes, he had his moment. Yes, he had his moment where he said, God, if there's any way. Father, if there's any, I've been there. If there's any way that you could pass this cup from me, please. Is there any other way? No, there's no other way. Okay, then let's go. See, we keep trying. He done said no, and you're still trying to find another way. He's saying, no, you got to die to yourself. No, you got to die to that smart mouth that you don't know how to be quiet when your husband says something and you don't agree. Shut up. We don't know how to die. You ain't going to talk to me like that. You ain't going to tell me what to do. I'm a grown woman. You a grown woman with a husband and you need to submit and chill out. If you want God to bless you, if you want God to bless you, see, I want God to bless me. I learned how to disagree with my husband in the prayer closet. Okay, baby, Father, in the name of Jesus, God, I don't think this is your plan for us. And God, I just ask that your will be done, Father God. Step in, let your perfect, let your kingdom come. Let your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Now, I'm not praying my will. I'm praying God's will. And then I come back out and he says, well, honey, I don't think we're going to do that. Oh, okay. Good idea. You the man, baby. You the man.
It's not about control. It's not about manipulation. It's about dying to yourself and allowing God's will to be done. See, Jesus didn't fight them when they came to get him. Jesus stopped. He, he did not fight. He what? He went with it. He knew what was waiting for him. See, sometimes you got to know. You got to know that it's not going to be easy. You got to know that it's going to be rough. You got to know that it may not be everything that you want to do right now. You may not want to go back to school. You may not want to have to do that work. You may not want to have to do that term paper. You may not want to have to study to take your finances to another place. You may not want to do whatever, but you know what? You got to die to thinking you always got to do what you want to do and start doing what you have to do. Because it's what God said. Jesus did not fight the process. He said, okay, I'm ready. Come on, let's go. Did he know he was going to get beat? Yes. Did he know he was going to get torn apart? Yes. But guess what? For the greater good, he was willing. Are you willing for the greater good? Are you willing to pay the price so that your children will be saved? Are you willing to do what God has told you to do so that there can be blessing upon your children and your children's children? Are you willing to put your pride and your arrogance and your smart mouth to the side to save your marriage? Are you willing to die to the ambitions and you keep trying to be a preacher and God didn't call you to be a preacher. He said you are called to be a businesswoman. Well, my mama wanted me to be a preacher and my daddy wanted me to be a preacher and my auntie was a preacher. But guess what? He didn't call you to be a preacher. See, we got to stop associating success according to what we think being a preacher, being a singer. That's what makes you successful. Selling albums, that's what makes you successful. So you got all the worship leaders across the nation. They don't want to serve at their home church because they just want to be a superstar. That is not for everybody. Do you understand what I'm saying? You got to die to what you think you want and what you think your plan is. Guess what? I'll even go a step further. There are certain things that were the plan of God for a season of your life. But once that season is up, you got to know it's time to transition. You got to know it's time to shift. You got to know. See, because you can't be where God was. Being where God was is just as bad as being where God is not. Because guess what? That's over. I had to understand that I was just as anointed when I was home changing diapers as, when I, as, as I am when I stand on this pulpit. Because it was the season and the time for me to learn how to be a mother. What kind of foolishness would it be where I'm trying to run all over the country and I don't take the time to learn how to be a wife and learn how to be a mother and I'm so worried about trying to maintain a career that I lose my family and my children and my husband. What kind of kingdom is that? And I'm not judging what anybody else does. This was God dealing with me. He said, Joanne, sit down. I fought, I fought him at first. I did. But then I sat down. And I began to pray. I began to seek his face. Not because I had to sing. Not because I had to preach. Just because I wanted a new level of relationship with him. And in the process of that relationship, I was saying, God, I want more. And many of you have heard me say this before. God, I want more. I want more. I want more. He said, Joanne, I can't give you more until you give what you already have. So I started a blog. And in that blog, I would diligently write every day lessons and teachings on the word of God. Things that to me were simple, but to other people were groundbreaking. That's where this book came from. In that process, he birthed in my heart a heart for discipleship. And then from there is where he gave me the heart to pastor. It was a process. If I had been on the road and I had been winning Grammys and I had been doing this and doing that and being great in my own eyes and doing what I wanted to do and fulfilling what my plan was, I could have missed the greater plan that God had for me to be a voice in my generation to disciple people and to let them know who Jesus is and who the Holy Spirit is. And I'm sorry to tell you, but many times that will go further than a song in the lives of people. Do you understand what I'm saying? And I had to go through that process to get to that next place. It was not easy. It was not comfortable. There were many days that I sat at home and I felt like a nobody. Because all the things that used to make me feel like a somebody had disappeared from my life. 
And I had to learn how to be a somebody, just me and Jesus. See, that's what helps me be able to preach a message and not worry about if you're going to like me when it's done or not. You see what I'm saying? Because if I'm worried about you liking me, then I fall into the trap of just preaching you the things that you want to hear, preaching the things that are going to make you shout, preaching the things that make you feel good about yourself, but don't really change anything about your life. You understand what I'm saying? It makes you free. See, that's what the dying process is going to do for many of you. When you stop fighting the process and you just, look, you just let go of the ghost. You just give it up. Give it up. You give up the ghost. A dead person doesn't care about people. See, you want to pastor effectively? Die. If you love me, I'll love you. If you hate me, I'll still love you. If you stab me in the back, I'm still going to pray for you. And I'm going to keep it moving because I'm dead. I'm dead in Christ. I no longer live, but Christ lives in me. I no longer live, but Christ lives in me. See, we too busy trying to be alive. We too busy trying to be in the flesh. We too busy trying to be all up in our emotions. And he's saying, come on and get up on this cross with me because it's time to die. See, when you're dead, nothing bothers you. When you're dead, you just keep it moving. When you're dead, you just let it go. Why? Because you're not caught and stuck in that flesh and that pride and that arrogance and all of those things that the, that the Lord is trying to deal with you in your place of desert. Do you understand what I'm saying? Cooperate with the process. Jesus didn't fight them. Jesus didn't fight them when they came. And let me tell you, there are certain people in your life there are people in your life that the enemy is using them to kill your flesh. I will trust in the Lord. I will trust in the Lord. I will trust in the Lord till I die, till I Oh, see, but we don't want to get to that die part. I'll trust you, but I don't want to die. There are people in your life right now. They don't like you. They give you a hard time. They talk about you. They push you. They aggravate you. See, they want to get under your skin. They want to make you angry. They want to make you lose it. You got to start looking past them. Hear me. Hear me prophetically. You got to start looking past them. See, Jesus was so amazing. He was able to look past the demonic spirit that was using Judas. And when he welcomed him, he said, hello, friend. Come on, do what you got to do and do it quickly. Come on, let's just, let's just get this show on the road. Let's get it done because I got somewhere to be. There's a redemption. Wait. There's a redemption that I have to pay for. So let's go ahead. Let's, let's get it cracking. Let's go. Friend, I call you my friend. Because even though you're working against me, you're pushing me toward the purpose and the destiny that God has for my... Woo. So you know what that means? You got to stop getting mad. You got to stop getting angry at them. You got to just look at them and say, thank you so much. You're teaching me to be more like Jesus. Thank you so much. Some of y'all got to look at your husband and say, thank you so much. You helping me look like Jesus. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. See, <laughs> see, I tell the single sisters all the time, I said, if you want to have to look like Jesus, get married. Because you sitting around crying because you're single. I want to be married. I want to be married. I don't, oh my God. And you don't even know what's waiting for you, girl. Let's work. Yeah, hey, Jesus. You want to talk about dying to yourself, huh? Get married. You want to talk about dying to your flesh and dying to your attitude? If you're going to do it God's way, get married. I got to ask permission to go out and travel. Help me, Jesus. And if he says no, it's no. And if he says yes, it's yes. And there were times that I wanted a yes, but I got to know. Hey, Lord, and I got so mad. Yes, 
I did. I was so angry. And God said, your hands sit down, sit down, sit down, sit down. Listen. I know what I'm talking about this morning. He said, friend, friend, stop getting stuck on people. Stop getting angry. Stop fighting people. And thank them and thank God that they are helping you. They're helping mold you. They're teaching you to be patient. Mm -hmm. They're teaching you to look like Jesus. They're teaching you to love your enemies. Oh, God. Didn't Jesus talk about that? Didn't Jesus, didn't Jesus, our Jesus talk about that? You know what the Holy Spirit revealed to me? And this is, okay, help me, Holy Ghost. So when Jesus went to the cross, on, in Luke 23, Luke 23, verse 34, he said this. He said, and Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Forgive them. The Holy Spirit began to, to reveal to me that if Jesus had died angry and bitter at those, oh God, that had crucified him, he would not have gotten up out of the grave. See, remember when Jesus said uh, that Satan was coming? He says, he's coming to me, but he won't find anything in me. So when he came to Jesus, he didn't find anger. He didn't find bitterness. He didn't find uh, lust. He didn't find anything in him. There was no, see, because he had to remain sinless. He had to remain sinless. So when he died, he had to remain sinless so that the Holy Spirit would then be able to go to the grave and raise him up. If he had died in sin, then he would have no longer been the lamb that was slain. Do you understand? So as you're dealing with these people, understand that you're dealing with a spirit that's operating behind the people. And you have to forgive them so that your death is not in vain. You have to forgive them so your death is not in vain. See, if you're trying to go through your process, and you are angry at that coworker that keeps pressing. If you, if you become bitter, if you see, we want to point at the sins that are external. Well, I'm not sleeping around. I'm not a drunkard. I ain't smoking no weed, but you bitter. <laughs> but you're living in unforgiveness. And then you're wondering why you're getting ulcers. It's the bitterness. It's the unforgiveness. And guess what? That bitterness and that unforgiveness will keep you dead and in that grave past your due date. See, because you have to realize this dying process is not the end of the story. It is part of the journey. And you got to go through the process correctly in order for there to be a resurrection. You have to go through the process correctly so the Holy Spirit has something to work with. You have to go through the process correctly and remain uncontaminated. You have to remain with a pure heart. You have to remain with an open heart. Okay? Look at this. Forgive. He said, Father, forgive them. They don't even know what they do. They don't even know what they're doing. You may have to say that 20 times a day at your workplace. Father, forgive them. Because they don't, Father, I forgive them because they don't even know what they're doing. Father, forgive them. I want to go through this process and I want to go through it with flying colors. See, because the problem is, is that you think you can avoid the process. And guess what? The process will just chase, chase you into the next season. What you want to do is you want to go through the process. You want to die. You want to allow the Holy Spirit to resurrect you. And you want to go to the next level. And once you go through the next level, you go coast for a while. And when it's time to shift again, you'll go through another dying process and you're elevated again. This dying process allows you to be glorified. What does that mean, to be glorified? It's, it's a portal to the favor. It's a portal to the destiny. It's a portal to the blessing. See, but we want the blessing, but we don't want to go through the portal. We don't want to go through the dying. We don't want to go. But there's no other way. There's no other way. Look at this. Romans 8, 11. 
If the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he who raised Christ Jesus from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies through his spirit who dwells in you. When you go through that dying process, you go through that pressing, that new anointing is released in you. When you go through that crushing, that grace of God is expanded in you. You will find out things about yourself that you never knew. You will, look, be broke. Be broke. And suddenly, especially if you have children, creativity is going to come out of everywhere in order for you to do what needs to be done. You didn't even know you were a seamstress till, till you'd had no money and you had to go to the second hand and start buying clothes and sewing them so that your babies would have some new clothes for school. See, pressing and putting you up under that pressure is going to bring stuff out of you that you didn't even know was there. So we want to avoid it because it hurts, not understanding that it's in the pressing. The bad comes out, yes, but also the good comes out. So the bad comes out so you can be purified, but then the good begins to come out so you can see the talents and the gifts and the anointing and the grace that God has placed in you for the next season. See, I want you to leave this place being excited about the process. It hurts and it's uncomfortable. Nobody likes to have to wait for their Boaz, okay? God help me, Jesus. But if you can't keep your legs closed while you're single, what makes you think you'll be able to keep them closed to another man when you're married? See, we think that, that, that marriage is going to help us. You got to deal with your junk because if you don't deal with your junk, it's going to resurrect and it's going to cause you problems. That's why you got to kill it now. You got to kill that flesh now. You got to kill that pride now. Go through the process. Go through the process. Last scripture, John 16. John 16 verse 13, and I'm almost done. When the spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all the truth for he will not speak on his own authority. But whatever he hears, he will speak, and he will declare to you the things that are to come. He will glorify me, for he will take what is mine and declare it to you. When you go through the dying process, and you come out on the other side, the Holy Spirit himself is the one that raises you up. We're so busy trying to network and trying to connect with this person and that person, and not even understanding and knowing that promotion comes from the Lord. You can network with everybody in the world, but if God does not give you favor with that person, it ain't going nowhere. So when you go through the dying process and you allow the Holy Spirit to do the work that needs to be done in you and you find yourself with a pure and a clean heart, then he's able to go into that grave at the appointed time and say, now, Sandra, come on, it's time to get up because it's time for there to be glory in your life. There's time for there to be faith. It's time now. The time is now. Get up. Get up. The three days is over. The three days is over. The three days is it's time to get up. It's time to get up. It's time to get up. And when you, oh, hey, I feel that in my spirit. God, I thank you. God, I thank you. See, when you raise yourself up, you only gonna go so high. But something happens when the Spirit of the Lord is the one that raises you up. Something happens when the Spirit of God is the one that gets you up out of that grave. Something happens when the Spirit of the Lord is the one that begins to open doors for you that no man can close. He opens doors for you that no man can close. You want to see favor in your life? Get somewhere and let the Holy Spirit the one that raises you up. He will raise you up so high your haters won't even be able to reach you. Yes, 
Yes, he wants you to be prosperous. Yes, he wants you to be blessed. Yes, he wants you to be favored. He spoke all of those things. He wants the Jesus in you to be glorified because that's the thing that you cannot forget. When you are being raised up and God is opening doors for you and you're allowed to start that business and you're allowed to go into a community and do what he called you to do, when you're allowed to preach across the world, when you're allowed to be on television, it's not that you're exalting yourself. You've gone through the process and you've died to yourself so that when the Holy Spirit raises you up, the one that you're shining, the one that you're glorifying, the one that people are being drawn to is who? Jesus. See, that's how you're able to be a pastor and not get arrogant and pride because you know, uh, you know what, I'm just dead and I'm here to glorify and point people to Jesus. I'm a millionaire to point people to Jesus. I have a great business to point people to Jesus. Why? Because all your ambition died and it's in the grave. And when he raised you up, he raised you up with a pure heart. He raised you up with a pure heart. I'm just going to ask you to lift your hands. God, I thank you. God, I thank you. Father, I thank you right now for your word. I thank you for your word. God, you spoke to me. You spoke to me. And you said to me, Joanne, you need to get to know me as the God in the desert. Because when you know me as the God in the desert, then it doesn't matter if you're on the mountaintop or it doesn't matter in, if you're in the valley. I pray in the name of Jesus that in the same way that you revealed yourself to me as the God in my desert, that I was able to come to know you like I've never known you before. Now if I have to go back into the desert, it doesn't bother me because I know, I know what it's like to be with you. So I ask God that you would reveal yourself to these amazing women of God as the God in their desert. I pray in the name of Jesus that they would give up the ghost. I pray in the name of Jesus that they would stop fighting the process. I pray in the name of Jesus, Father God, that they would just submit to the dying process, that they would submit to your dealings, that they would submit, Father God, to your will and to your plan, that they would submit, Father God, and stop worrying about everybody that's not with them or everybody that's coming against them or everybody that's not agreeing with them. Father God, teach them to hear your voice and stand alone. Teach us to hear your voice and stand alone if we have to. I ask right now, Father, for the grace, for the grace, for the grace that is needed to worship in the process. Father, I ask right now for the grace, Father God, that is needed to yield in the process. God, I ask for the grace right now to do the things, Father God, that we need to do, that we may not want to do, Father God. That, Father God, that we would stop acting like spoiled children and that we would mature and be strong and mature believers. To do what we may not necessarily want to do, but know that it is necessary. And even in it being necessary, God, teach us to do it with a smile. Teach us to do it with thanksgiving. Teach us to do it with joy. Understanding, Father God, that after every death, there is always a resurrection. Teach us, Father God, Father God, to look, Father God, at the blessing, Father God, to look, Father God, at the glory that is set before us, Father God. Help us not to just get stuck, Father, looking at that cross and saying, oh, I don't want to die. But give us the boldness to say, if it's my time to die, then let me die. Holy Spirit, I trust you that in the right moment, you will raise me back up. Teach us to trust you. When things don't go right, teach us to trust you. When things are falling apart, teach us to trust you. When our pride is being broken and destroyed and we feel humiliated, teach us to trust you. And allow us to go through the process, Father God, in the most productive way possible. So that we can get to the resurrection at the appointed time. There's not a friend like the lonely Jesus. No, not one. No, not one. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. I pray that you were blessed by the word of God this morning. me and all my tissue.
on, let's give her another hand. Oh my goodness, awesome. Cooperate with the process. How many is going to cooperate with the process? But what I heard was three days is over. Awesome, awesome word of God. Amen, amen. Hey Amen. Do you, do you all feel refreshed and renewed today? Amen. Amen. I want, well, come on back up here, Pastor Joe, and I want Dr. Joe Tanker to come on up here. Oh, these are pretty ladies. Come on up here. It's good when you can look at somebody. Well, okay, come on up here. <laughs> because this, is this your first time in Rock Hill? Oh my God, is this your first time in Rock Hill? Look at all these millionaires out here. Look at all these blessed women of God out here. They came to this house. Y'all ain't saying nothing. They came to this house to bless you with a word of God. I want to pray for them today. Oh, God. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you for these powerful women of God. God, fill them anew, Father God. What they have poured out to us, Father God, strengthen them, renew them, refresh them, Father God. We thank you, Father God, for even peace in their homes, Father God. Whatever they desire from you, Father God, I desire, that God, that you give it to them. Give it to them. Whatever they're believing you for, Father God. Things they have not told anybody but you, Father God. They're putting it before you right now in the name of Jesus, Father God. I thank you, Father God, that the tears that they have cried, Father God, that you have collected them, Father God. But I declare major, major breakthroughs for them, Father God, today. They have just stepped into a new chapter. They have just written a new book. They have just started a new company, Father God. I thank you for the business that's on the inside of these women, Father God. Thank you that they're pushing it forth right now in the name of Jesus, God. Anoint them from their head. Anoint them from their feet, Father God. I thank you for major turnarounds. Major turnarounds today, Father God, in their life, Father God. You said the steps of a good man are ordered by you, Father God. So order their steps, Father God. Order them daily from Sunday to Sunday, Father God. Every minute, every second, every hour, Father God. Fill their mouth with the fire of God, Father God. That their mouth would be like a pen of a ready writer, Father God. I thank you that they're stepping into a new season, Father God. God, whatever you say, they shall do, Father God. I thank you for these queens, Father God. I thank you for these queens, Father God. Even their children, let it trickle down to their children, Father God. Straight A's in school, Father God. If they're in college, straight A's, God. God, I thank you for their families as a whole. God, I thank you for major peace in their families, God. God, we call it done, Father God. All surround the houses, God. Release ministered angels, God. Cover them, cover them, cover them. Even on the plane, cover them, cover them, cover them. Cover them. when they get on the runway, favor when they get home, favor on their job, favor in the living room, favor in the bedroom, favor in the kitchen, God, wherever they go, wherever they shop, favor! And it is so, it is so, it is so, and in Jesus' name we pray, amen. Come on, let's believe you believe in shop glory. Oh, God, love you, ladies. Oh, God. Woo, somebody shout favor. Favor. Woo. Ezebe ki anda. Andale bi ando no mo sondo no konda na sinda resando lobo kotaya. And let another mantle ushebe. Andala bakando rusondo rushete. A prayer. Kona sinda. Ande, inda, anda. Fire! Fire, fire, fire in the morning, fire at night, fire in the middle of the day, fire out of our mouth, out of our belly, rivers, 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 Ababoko 
Now let the blood of Jesus cover our husband. Abo Shamanda. Raise him up, Obosa. Raise him up, Obosha. For such a time as this. Ela Bakanda Lobosata. To tear down Obosa. To build up Obosha. Open, open, open the wells. Open the wells, Obosha. Open the wells. Open the windows. Open the portals. And beyond the Lobosaya. Oh, Resaya. And every prayer that's been prayed. Every prophetic word that's been spoken. Father, in the name of Jesus, we declare an increase of true sons and daughters in this house. We declare an increase of true sons and daughters. I ask God that you would remove, Father God, motivations that are not of you. Remove motivations that are not of you among the people. Some of it is out of ignorance, but we ask, Father God, that that you would multiply. Father God, in the same way that you took of the spirit that was upon Moses, Father God, and placed it on the elders in order to do the work, I ask that you would take of the spirit of the Lord that is upon Father God, Pastor Maurice and Pastor Kay, in the name of Jesus, and you would take of the spirit that is upon them, Father God, and pour it on their sons and their daughters, Father God, so that they can do the work that is required in this city, oh God. I thank you, Father, for the work that is required to be done in this city, Father God. And it must be done with pureness of heart and one spirit and one mind. Yes, no division, no double-mindedness, but one spirit, a single mind. Let the mind that is in Christ, that is in this man and this woman of God, be in the sons and daughters of this house. Increase the honor, O oh God. Increase the honor. Increase the honor in the hearts of the children so that they can be prepared for the harvest. So that they can multiply in a way that is healthy. Church, the word of God teaches us that we multiply, we multiply according to our own kind. If you do not have the spirit and the heart of your pastors, then please find another church. I'm not trying to be funny. If when they speak, you don't hear the voice of God for your life, then maybe you're in the wrong place. Because this is the problem. You're gonna multiply according to who you are. So they may be one way, but if you have a different spirit and a different attitude about you, when you bring in people or when you get in relationship with other people that are in the church, you will contaminate them with your attitude, with your thinking, and the multiplication will be sickly. The multiplication will be contaminated. Does this make sense? So you have to have one spirit. Let their vision be your vision. Let their heart be your heart. Let their motivation be be your motivation and pray for them that God would keep them you may think that you can do a better job than they do and you may have the ability in the natural but if God didn't call you it don't matter so pray for them cover them on all sides that God would keep them and speak to them and and maintain that spirit of holiness upon them and integrity that they would hear the voice of God don't just sit back and just come and eat every Sunday cover them fight for them fight for them fight for them I hear the spirit of the Lord saying that you're tired of fighting for yourself you and your husband are tired of fighting for yourselves you have fought for yourself a long time. But I declare now the strength of the Holy Spirit. 
in your emotions, in your spirit, in your soul, and in your body. And I declare prophetically that there is a house that God will raise up in Rock Hill that will fight for their pastors. That you will fight for them so hard in the spirit that they will feel the lightness of the load. That they will feel the lightness of the load. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Love you, my sisters. Might be an eyelash in this tissue, you know, or something. But I'm okay. I'm okay. Why don't you hug your sister and just tell her you love her? That's her. Woo! My God. That's it. today. I feel, a, ooh, I feel filled up today. My sister, Pastor Kim, I love you. Amen. Amen. I love all the smiles. That's what true sisterhood would do. Sometimes it's not just, okay, I'm saying it, but yes, I'm praying for my sister. Sometimes that's what you have to do is pray for your sisters and cover them. Amen. Well, we're coming to the end of Connections. And um, I've had a blast. I've had an awesome, awesome, awesome time. I feel like I can do cartwheels on this runway, but I'm not. That's not by the spirit. I'm just not going to do it. Amen, amen. Well, we're getting ready for our feast. How many of you enjoyed the food last night? Awesome, awesome. Well, we have some more food for you today. And we want to patronize the vendors today as well. Definitely those books. Thank you for Pastor Joanne for just all the books that she's given to you. That Believe me, definitely sow a seed. Y'all know how we do it at Agape. We don't, we're not, we don't even say cheap. We say inexpensive. Okay? So whatever we need to do to plant, take everything off Jewel, Dr. Jewel Tanker's table. We want to buy it, slam up. Amen? So let's stand to our feet. Amen. If we say cheap, we say innocent. Actually, you can come back in here. I think Pastor so Brandon. Wait, the team is, well, okay. Well, you know you're a one man. Come on, let's get Pastor Brandon Holt. Amen. The only Pastor Brandon Holt, an awesome man. Amen. He's got so much in that belly. Amen. And I know God is going to take him higher and higher. Come on, okay, ladies, Pastor what we're going to do, we're going to definitely Holt. head out. Um, where's it? Um, Sister Diana? She's supposed to give us instructions. Okay, come on up. The same. Okay, come up here because I mean, because everybody in the back can't hear you. An awesome job to the dancers. God had given me a vision. They were saying, "Okay, Pastor, we're gonna do it." And I tell you what, they danced today. Awesome, awesome. Good morning, good afternoon. I know we are having an awesome, awesome time, but we are ready to serve.